Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, Fisker, Karma, Canu, Faraday Future, California is quickly becoming the capital of the EV world. And yet, another startup is unveiling a drivable prototype in Los Angeles. The company's name is IndyV and its first model is Indy1. Can Indy1 stand out in the EV space, which is quickly becoming very crowded? Let's talk about that. Bakunin Live. Michael Bakunin here, and this channel is all about electric vehicles and related technologies. As a Model Y owner, I am becoming more and more convinced that the automotive industry is converging on an optimal EV SUV shape, which is leaving less and less room for creativity. The silhouette of Indy 1 reminds me of Model Y, Mach E, ID4, and some other electric crossovers. And this is clearly done to achieve the best energy efficiency, which is critical to succeed in the EV race. The actual size of Indy 1 is somewhere between Model Y and Model X, and it will seat five passengers. The EV has an air suspension to maximize clearance when necessary and optimize it for better aerodynamics. Integrated door handles, a single piece glass roof, 22 inch wheels. This description may work for maybe half of the electric SUVs in the market, but IndyEV decided to take another path to differentiate. The IndyEV founder is Shi Hai, a Chinese computer game entrepreneur who decided to merge the two worlds of e-mobility and gaming and integrated a super gaming computer into Indy1. I will come back to this decision at the end of the episode, but right now I want to bring it to your attention while we are reviewing the exterior of the vehicle. The so-called frunk space is taken by the vehicle integrated computer, and part of the hood is actually transparent, which allows you to see the housing of the supercomputer, which had to be designed to withstand various temperature regimes and vibrations. I'm guessing you're not surprised to see the three screens on the dashboard after I've mentioned the supercomputer. The tiny one behind the steering wheel is for basic content such as speed and driving range. The 15-inch screen in the middle is for vehicle control, navigation, and Linux-based infotainment system. It will be controlled by a scrolling mouse-like knob. And the third one is actually for the passenger. Also 15 inches, connected to the PC under the hood, and passengers in the rear don't have this screen privilege and are supposed to use VR devices. The Indy1 has a few additional cameras in unexpected locations. As an example, one camera can monitor your child in the back, but also they are trying to give customers an opportunity to film road trips from different angles without the need to pull smartphones out of their pockets and edit footage right in the vehicle. Needless to say, your videos can be uploaded to, let's say, YouTube from Indy1 too, thanks to an integrated 5G modem. Cameras are supposed to be controlled via voice commands. Uh, what else? Um, maybe a cooler underneath the center armrest for canned drinks is not exactly common for electric vehicles, but the rest is pretty much expected. Above average roominess, wireless phone charges, USB ports, the standards in the EV space are pretty high and you need to work hard to meet customers' expectations. Indy EV is powered by a 95 kWh battery pack and targeting a 275 mile driving range. All wheel drive and 0 to 60 acceleration in 5.5 seconds. The Indy EV team is not overselling its driver assist system. The system is called Hello ADAS and it looks like they are mostly focusing on alerts and warning efficiency versus promising a self-driving moon. I have a feeling that they are not planning to use this supercomputer to support the drive assist system. I keep calling it the supercomputer, but 
Is it really a supercomputer? In fact, it's a Windows PC with an i7 processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 graphics card. Not bad for gaming, but let's say honestly that supercomputer is just a marketing spin. Indie One's price is expected to be in the $45,000 to $65,000 range and the company is planning to start accepting orders for Indie V early next year. Before sharing my personal views about this Indie One, may I please ask you to subscribe and hit the like button. Done? Okay. Here we go. The company was founded in 2017 and they've done a pretty good job by putting together a drivable prototype. Obviously, the reason we are seeing Indy One is the need to raise additional funds for serial production. The emphasis on their onboard gaming and entertainment could have been unique when they started the project, but today Model S already has up to 10 teraflops of processing power to enable in-car gaming for passengers in the rear, which is very appropriate when you travel with kids. Indie One, though, seems to be addressing a slightly different segment with its third screen for the passenger in the front. Interestingly, I sometimes write scripts and edit videos during road trips. I'd use a MacBook pad with an iPhone and two chargers. Not ideal, I agree, but sort of works for me. In that sense, Indie One can be an improvement, but is it a critical feature for customers like me? Honestly, I'd rather have something to entertain my kids during long road trips. Another catch here. Will it be really possible to travel in Indy One? Energy efficiency is not excellent. Less than 300 miles on a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack and fast charging infrastructure is not really there. Looks like the entire concept can fall apart unless Tesla allows third party OEMs access to its fast charging network. So what do you think? Impressed? Excited? Let me know in the comment section here below and see you next week.